this part is really nice. There's a little bit of a level area, so it's not much climbing. We're gonna get to the up and down in a minute, but it's nice, deep snow, gorgeous, and it's not raining. Snow, far rather deal with snow than with rain. Off we go. Well, 6.36 in the morning, just hitting the trail. Of course, the forecast of nice weather has gone to shit and it's now scheduled for 24 hours of rain. So we're hiking up the path here. It's really nothing but rocks and wet snow with rain coming down. So you can see the uh, dawn's early light behind me. Time to switch over to snowshoes. It's a funny uh, challenge right now. You're trying to stay warm, but at the same time, at the same time that you're trying to stay warm, you also really don't want to get wet from sweat. So rather just a little bit cool than too hot. A quick rest break for rehydration, fueling, and also for something else. I was reading an account of the Russians against the Germans in World War II. The German tankers used to take these things called tanker candies, which were a mix of amphetamines and morphine. Now, since we've been breaking trail straight uphill through the snow with snowshoes the last couple hours, I wish I had some. All I have is this 100 milligrams of caffeine, which is going to be pretty good. So it's level now. It's level and not straight uphill. It's a lot easier. Hopefully get to the Mount Cypress area soon. Well, arrived at the Mount Cypress downhill ski area. There's a nice little warming hut. Just uh, rehydrating, refueling, and then moving on. It's always such a fine balance. Not being hot enough to sweat and not being cold enough to freeze. So you gotta be right there in the cusp, right in the middle. Coming down through an area with a bunch of small cabins in it. It's really cute. Totally looks like a little polar village. Maybe we found Santa. It's really deep snow here. Gotta put the snowshoes back on. So much faster without, but they're absolutely necessary here. Still snowing, getting close to the halfway mark, but probably gonna be dealing with snow and ice for the entire rest of the trip. Just hit a patch of softer snow. Went in multiple times, right up to my hips. So I had to stop and strap on the snowshoes. Well, after eight hours, halfway mark, Cleveland Dam. Come so far down, it's raining now. So we gotta start climbing to get back up into the snow. That is a very, very long way down. Now it would hurt. So we just hit our halfway resupply point. Some food, some drink, ditched the snowshoes. So we'll see if that turned out to be a good idea. The trick here is not to stop moving for too long. It's a movement based game. Movement means warmth, means not dying. We're rapidly losing light, but there's snow and there are cliffs. It's very misty mountains. Very J.R.R. Tolkien, The Hobbit. Like failing fast, I'm gonna cover as much ground as possible here. I'm betting that within 15 minutes, there's gonna be headlamps back on. It's kind of half snow and half raining. We're going down though, so it's gonna get wetter. All right, headlamp came out. I'm doing you a favor, turning it off. This is a gorgeous little creek that we're crossing here. So at the risk of undermining the hardcore reputation. Here we are at a little tiny cafe. The only cafe on the roof, but it's a cafe nonetheless. I'm a little bit psychic, and I'm guessing I can feel that most of the rest of the trail is going to look an awful lot like this. I don't know if you can hear the rushing water. We're getting really close to a big, tall suspension bridge. In the summer, there's tons of lineups here. Strangely though, in the middle of winter, with it raining, snowing, and ice all over the place, in the middle of the night, there's not a single soul here other than us idiots. Look at that view. Well, trust me, it's stunning. So we've just reached the top of the Seymour Grind. It's about a three, 400 meter climb in the snow. It's all downhill from here. 10 p.m., I've been going for a while. According to this little sign here, we probably have one and a half two hours left, but it's not gonna be that tough. The secret to going mile after mile after mile 
are these coconut almond energy orbs with chocolate chips. Amazingly important. The funny thing is, a guy on Instagram saw these, saw a big pile of these, and asked me if it was all weed, if I was bringing weed on this hike. First of all, unlike just about, it seems, every other jujitsu in the world, I don't smoke or eat weed. But more importantly, if you can do a hike like this, high as a kite, then you're a much, much better man than I am. I think you would get lost and probably die. Well, after 17 and a half hours, we're done. Woo! Midnight. <laughs> midnight. Stroke of midnight. Very dramatic. So that was 17 and a half hours on the trail. The first hour was in darkness. And then the last seven hours were in darkness. So eight hours. And it was pretty much either raining or snoring the whole day. It was raining the beginning, the middle, and the end. And it was snowing all the other time. So clearly, on a, something like that, you can wear different kinds of sweaters, you can wear different kinds of fleeces, you can wear different kinds of raincoats. But the most important part of your body is your feet. The whole thing works, depends on your feet, taking care of your feet. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into taking care of your feet. Number one, the first thing that goes on them is either crampons, which get strapped on, or snowshoes. So, yeah, that's a lot of extra weight, but it allows you to not get, to not slip all over the place. I'm not making the most sense here because I have been just walking for 17 and a half hours. Snowshoes, you don't sink into the snow and you get grip. The next thing, you don't want your shoes to fill up with snow or with rocks or anything. So you got gators. So you have these big things that strap over and seal off the top of the boot from getting filled up with snow or rock or even water. All of this is pretty important today. The next thing, obviously, is the boots, All right? These are pretty good boots, mostly waterproof, fairly warm, almost big enough. They weren't quite big enough today because your feet swell after walking for so long. And also on the downhill, your toes get slammed into the front of the boot. But for ordinary hiking, they're all right. But today, ideally, a size larger, but... So the next thing that goes on your foot, the boot. So we got crampons, gaiters, boots. The next thing is socks. So these are heavy duty merino wool socks. They, uh, they're soaked, but they're still warm. My feet were never cold, which is great. Ugh. This foot was particularly soaked. You can see I taped my toes here. There's a quite an elaborate taping job that went into that to prevent the blisters. And usually it's worked fairly well. I know I've got one or two, but unlike, it's not the whole foot that's covered. Ugh. And then we got blisters on this, <laughs> blisters, we got tape on that foot as well. So we got crampons or snowshoes. We got gaiters, we got heavy duty boots. Man, they're heavy right now. We got socks, we got tape, and then we got skin forged in fire by long previous hikes. So the layers of protection for your feet on something as crazy as a winter death march.